In this section of the course, we will build a baseline application that exposes a chat interface to its Masses users where they can go and ask questions to our bot. And the first step that we need to do to build this application is to ingest our documents into a vector store so that we can retrieve them later on as new queries come from our users. And in the repo that is shared uh, along with this course, you will find ingest.py file. And in this file, we define uh, the process of ingesting documents. So let's review this uh, file together. Let's first look at a function that is used to load our documents. And we have our documents stored in markdown format in a specific directory. And we pass that directory to the function. It um, creates a list of paths uh, to markdown files within the directory and then it processes them using unstructured markdown loader, which is again a utility coming from Langchain and returns a list of documents. These documents may be longer than uh, what we can stuff into the prompt. And for that reason, we have the chunking function. The chunking function takes as input a list of documents that were retrieved in the previous steps. It uh, takes chunk size as a parameter, uh, as well as chunk overlap and then it returns a list of document sections uh, that um, were processed using again a markdown text splitter that we've seen in the previous video. Now that we have a list of document sections, we can uh, pass them through an embedding model to generate embeddings and store these embeddings in a vector store. The create vector store function takes as input a list of documents that we want to process and embed and then store in a vector store and it returns a ChromaDB vector store that contains uh, the documents along with their embeddings. We're using the OpenAI embeddings uh, to generate the embedding vectors, and we're using Chroma from documents uh, um, function to uh, pass the documents along with the embedding function and then persist it to a certain uh, directory location, and then we are returning the uh, vector store object. We could keep the document store and the vector embeddings locally, but very often we need something more than that. One reason might be that we want to run our application on a remote server, and then it would be helpful to pull the documents and their embeddings from a, a, from a remote location. Another reason is when we want to track the lineage of uh, our application. Let's say we are uh, constantly modifying uh, our prompt, our embedding models, our documents, and we want to make sure that we know for a specific um, request that we locked in production, which version of documents uh, was used to uh, produce that response. And this can be very helpful if we troubleshoot, for example, errors in responses to our user queries. And for this reason, we will use Weights and Biases Artifact. We will lock both the data set containing our list of documents uh, to Weights and Biases, and we will also log the index with vector store uh, embeddings into Weights and Biases Artifacts. The same thing applies to our prompt. As we're experimenting with different versions of our system template, our user template, we want to make sure that we understand how that influences our results uh, in production or in evaluation. And for that reason, we need proper version control of that prompt. And again, weights and biases is the right tool to help us with this ver version control of our prompt artifact. The ingest data function puts these things together. Uh, it ingests a directory of markdown files and it returns a vector store. To run this function, we can pass a list of arguments which can control the directory of our documents, the chunk size, the chunk overlap, and we can now run this function which will parse our arguments. It will initialize a weights and biases run that will be used to store our artifacts. It will create um, a list of documents. It will create embeddings in the vector store and then store that in weights and biases artifacts. Let's now run the script and we will specify our docs directory to point to the directory that contains a sample of our documentation.
And as you can see, this, this starts a weights and biases run that will be used to store our artifacts, including the embeddings, the document store, and our prompt. If we navigate to our artifact section, we can see that the data set uh, has been saved. We can see the document JSON file. We can also see um, the uh, chat prompt here in our artifact section. And if we view this artifact, we can go and see the prompt that was used. And we can also see the vector store, which is, again, if we look at the latest version, is stored which is stored as a chroma collections uh, a set of chroma collections parquet files and um, it can be now pulled and uh, used to uh, instantiate our vector store potentially on a remote uh, virtual machine <laughs>